from today the lord will show you what to do in the mighty name of jesus in this month as we teach on finances uh, the next step you need to take in your finance the lord will make it clear to you in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, you will not succumb to the spirit of error. Uh, concerning your finances, uh, you will not make mistakes. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, those of you that are on the path of mistakes, uh, the Lord will recover you. Uh, grace will recover you. Uh, mercy will recover you. Uh, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus. In Jesus' name, we have praise. Come on, if you're excited to be in church this morning, can you celebrate Jesus? Hallelujah. You may please be seated in God's presence. Look at your neighbor to your right and to your left and welcome them and say, neighbor, it's great to see you this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So welcome them to church. Introduce yourself. Ask them how they're doing. How's their week been? And trust that they're doing okay. Praise God. I said, praise God. I said, praise God. Hallelujah. All right. So let's get into the word of God this morning. So last week we started talking about finances. And if you did not listen to the message last week, I want to encourage you to please go back and listen to it because it was a very, very powerful message. Praise God. And it's very important when it comes to the teaching on finances. So today we're talking about how to make more money. How many people want to make more money? Oh, lucky people don't need money. You guys are good. I love you, man. Oh, this is kind of perfect church. You all, all of you pay your tithe, right? Because you don't need more money. Ah, I love that lady. She kept waving. and said, Pastor, me, I want more. Praise God. So, how do we make more money? Now, as a pastor, I talk to people, and one of the things you will see when it comes to believers is this. Believers have seen in the scriptures how God has told them that they will be successful, how God has told them they will be wealthy. I mean, can we be honest, guys? I didn't ask God. God said you will lend to nations. I did not beg God to. Do you get it? I didn't ask God that I want to lend. He's the one that told me you will lend to nations. So we see all of this in scripture. But the question is this. What is the reality of the average believer? What's the reality? For most people, the reality is this. I'm just ordinary when it comes to my finances. I'm no different from the other person beside me. And we see that a lot. In fact, so much so that we now have believers that they believe a part of the Bible, but they don't believe other parts of the Bible. So when it comes to finances, they say, Sera, 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 whatever will be, will be. But when it comes to healing, God can heal. But for money, <laughs> God gives money to only pastors. Praise God. But the truth is this God's word is real. God's word does not fail. So the question is this. Why is it that there's a difference between my reality and what the word of God is saying? Why? And if you're asking that question, you're not alone. That is the question a lot of people are asking. Why is there such a difference between what I trust God for? I mean, I put in my effort. I do my best. And at the end of the month, no matter how hard I try, 150,000 naira, maybe. No, there must be more than that. There must be more than that. And the truth is this, there is more than that. And that is why we are teaching on this subject. And unfortunately, for some of us, what we've been told or what we've learned is when it comes to money, there's a popular song. You know that song now? Should we sing it together? One, two, go. Give, and it will come back. Come on now. Uh, turn it over. <laughs> Praise God. So we sang that song. We sing that song all the time. But the question is this: I've given, I've given, I've given. I'm still waiting for the guy must go from heaven. But when it comes to finances. You must understand how finances work. So, when it comes to the subject of making money, the first thing that you must deal with is the mentality. And that's why we spoke expressly about that last week. Because if the mindset is wrong, you will produce the wrong thing. So, that mindset is the foundation. You, and that's why you must go back. See, whenever you listen to a message, don't just listen to the message and go sit with it. 
Because if the mindset is wrong, then your outcome will be wrong. So when it comes to making money, the first thing is this. How, what is my mindset? And we spoke about that last week. The second thing when it comes to making money, and for those of us that are into career, please pay attention. Because I wish I knew this before I started a 9 to 5 job. Probably I may not have done 9 to 5. Money is the reward for creating value. Write it somewhere. And let me just warn you ahead. This, this teacher today might be very academic. But the question is this. Will you take what you need to change your life? Money is what you are rewarded for, for creating value. You are not rewarded for wearing suit and tie and going to the office. You are not rewarded for sending email. Can I boss your bubble? You are not rewarded for attending meeting. Because all of you, I'm in a meeting, I'm in a meeting, I'm in a meeting. Money is the reward for what? Creating value. So the question this morning is this. What exactly is value? So the way you create value, one of the great ways you create value, please pay attention to this. People have always said, you create value by solving problems. That is true, but that is not complete. Why? There are problems in a lot of places. And you can solve problems that nobody is willing to pay for. And you can solve problems that nobody is able to pay for. So value is when you solve a problem that people are willing and able to pay for in a way that you end up with a profit. Value is what? By solving a problem that people are willing and they are able to pay for in a way that you make a profit. You know, and if you are not into market understanding, you have a challenge if you are doing business. You know, people say that in Africa, Africa is a big market. If I want to do something now, all I just need to do is to get one person in Africa to buy 10 naira times 1.5 billion people, that's 15 billion naira. I'm a rich man. Let's sit down first. In Africa, Africa has over a billion people. But how many people in Africa can spend up to $12 a day? They are not up to 400 million. Let me say it again. Africa has almost 1.5 billion people. How many people in Africa, based on the last statistics I checked, can spend up to $12 a day? They are, we are not up to... We are not up to 400 million. Same thing for Nigeria. They say, oh, Nigeria is a big market. You <laughs> know, in Nigeria, <laughs> we have 200 million people. Let's say we do. Most of the people in Nigeria, when you look at the demography, there's something called bottom of the pyramid. They are the lowest of the lowest of the lowest. Why am I showing all these statistics to you? If you say you are solving problem and there's nobody that is willing or able to buy it, my brother, my sister, you have entered a trap. So, value is when you what? Solve a problem that there is what? People that are willing and people that are what? Able to buy it. That's why those that do real estate in Lekia and Nikoi, and those that do real estate in the other places, their margin is different. Is it because the, is the soil the same? In fact, can I be honest with you? Sometimes this soil there is better than what is here. But why is this place more expensive? Because of the people's earning capacity here and their willingness to put money for it. So if you don't understand this thing, this is why you go to a job and they're only paying you 150,000 naira and you are so angry. The question is this, what's the value you're adding to the organization? Because you are paid based on value to the organization, not based on your sweat. Did you hear me? You are paid based on the value to the organization, not based on your sweat. So if you like, carry typewriter, carry fax machine, whatever you do, send email. The question is this, how much value is he adding to us? That's why you people think that you work harder than your CEO. You're a joker. All the personnel costs in your organization, everything, ask those that know. All of you, no matter how many you are, it's just one line in, in the financial statement. 
One line. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So it is important you understand this concept of value. Now, as I talk about the concept of value, remember I said it might sound very academic, but just follow me. Oh, yes, I, I did not read the scripture to you. Ah, this scripture, I read it, I was angry. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 14. Please, let's open to Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 14. <laughs> hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Because some of you still say, mm, Pastor, you know, the love of money is the root of all living. <laughs> Continue. Ecclesiastes chapter 9, verse 14. So what the Bible says. I want to read the message translation to you. <laughs> I read this scripture, I just laughed. So what the Bible says. The Bible says, there was a small town with only a few people in it. I'm reading the message translation. A strong king came and mounted an attack, building trenches and attack posts around it. Verse 15, this is the emphasis. There was a poor. Notice what the Bible said. There was a poor but wise man. Why? If you are wise, you shouldn't be poor. But you can be wise and be poor. If you don't apply the wisdom, you know. But I will come back later. Whose wisdom saved the town, but it was promptly forgotten. They forgot him in a hurry. See what the Bible now said. He was only a poor man after all. I will never be poor in my life. Ah, no, 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 no. Ah! They can forget you if you are poor. I did not say it to the Bible. They forgot this guy in a hurry. Even though he saved the people. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So, if you don't understand the concept of value, you will just be fighting your boss on your salary. So, that's why no matter how emotional you are, they will not increase your, your salary unless the value to the organization increases. CEOs, amen. As hard as you know the country is, why have you not increased the salary of your driver? The value is added to you has not changed. I'm not saying that you should not increase people's salary, but I'm just saying that that's why some people's salaries don't go. Glory to God. So, when you talk about value, there is this concept called money vehicle. What is a money vehicle? Money vehicle is the carrier of value. So, value doesn't just move like that. Value comes up or value is rewarded, better still, value is rewarded through what we call a money vehicle. So, what's a money vehicle? For example, all of you know about vehicles. So, if I want to go from Lagos to London, I can fly a plane. Okay, I can fly, I can, I can fly there. I'm not the one fly, fly, flying the plane, I'm not the pilot. But I can go by air. But I can also go by road. The thing is this, two of us will get there. The only thing is this, I will get there in a better state than you that went by road. Praise God. So sometimes the differences in our lives when it comes to money is what money vehicle are you employing? And the vehicle you use determines, depends on the destination that you are going to. The question is this, what is your financial destination? Some of you, all you want is, I just want to be okay. And it's not bad to be okay. Just be okay. Don't be following all these Instagram people that will be telling you things that are, don't exist. So some of you, that's all you want. You just want to be okay. Some of you, you have big dreams and big visions. So ultimately, the money vehicle you choose is dependent on the destination. So it's just like in Lagos here, in Lagos, from Lekki to the mainland, you can enter Danfo. You can enter... Keken, Marwa, just that the Keken may not get to the mainland because it may fly off toward mainland. You can enter a boat. You can enter a car. You can enter a helicopter. It depends on what you want to achieve. So let's quickly talk about what are some of the money vehicles because if you don't understand what a money vehicle is, you will not know how money comes. And that's what I'm trying to show you. How does money come? The first money vehicle is your nine to five job. And let me say something here very quickly. You know, people come and say, everybody, if you want to be rich, you must be an entrepreneur. 
that statement has gotten a lot of people in trouble because it's not everyone that is wired to be an entrepreneur. So be saved. One way that God blesses people is through a nine to five job. And in a nine to five job, when you start a nine to five job, what happens to you is this you begin to grow based on achieving certain tasks. Then for you to get promoted, which is where your next financial miracle will come from, you need to start performing at, the, at that next level. Then at a point, you need to learn management skills so that you now become a manager. At a point, you need to now start knowing more about the business. There are people that are billionaires today based on nine to five. The only problem is this. They are very few. But do they exist? They do. This is public record. How much was the CEO of MTN paid in 2022? Do you know? It was paid on PayPal. It was paid 850 million naira. That is minus. You know, <laughs> I was saying, I said, the way some people travel and they collect Esther code, if they carry all their Esther code, they can manage their expenses for the whole year. Because they'll give you Esther code but they'll still provide breakfast, lunch, and dinner for you. Excuse me, what are you now doing with the Esther code? There's a guy called Steve Ballmer. Go and check him. The guy was the... I, oh my God. You know, the true way to say it is business manager. But what it means, it was an EA to Bill Gates. The guy, he knows nothing about Microsoft too. But from executive assistant, he spent 20 years of his life. He became the CEO of Microsoft. Can I be honest with you? In that time, say, if Microsoft did not do so well. But right now, he's a multi-billionaire in dollars. Why? He spent 20 years in one job. So, all this one, they tell you, you must be a, you know, entrepreneur. Calm down. Don't let them lead you into trouble. I know people that have become billionaires in consulting firms, the big fours. They stayed there all through. They spent 20 years of their life and they became a partner. Do you know what partners make? You know, it's okay to get salary, but there's something better. It's called profit share. It's called profit share. Your share of the profits. Your own salary is defined. Share of the profits is undefined. Yes. Glory to God. And this is just from a nine-to-five job. See, I'm taking my time to say this because some of you are salary earners here. And in your mind, they're like, I can never be prosperous. No. There are people, ask the, people, your pastors. I know people. There's a guy. He said he wants to become CEO of a bank. You know what he does? He will spend six months in one job, in one bank, and move to another bank. Once he does that, he has jumped two levels. Why? He knows where he's going. It depends on the money vehicle you want to use. Glory to God. I said glory to God. So you can have a 9 to 5. But the question is this. What should I do on my 9 to 5? Very important. On your 9 to 5, there are a couple of things you must do. Number one, you must know what matters to the organization. You must work in what matters to the organization. Then if you are going to become CEO, you need to translate from just knowing your job to developing something we call high income skill. A CEO is not recruited most times. A CEO is appointed. And they're appointed based on their skill. Why? Because when you are CEO, it's not about how well you can sell, do, do tellering. <laughs> it's not about how well you can do the small stuff. What they judge you based on when you are a CEO is profits before tax and profit after tax. Did you meet the target? What they judge you based on is the share price. It's something called earnings per share. Those are the things they judge you based on. So, you, you'll be angry because in a job, you resume at 9, you close by 5. And you clock in, you clock out. Your CEO can come in at 10 o'clock, he can leave at 1 o'clock. You say, these people are enjoying. The problem is this. Their own measure is not by 9 to 5. It's by whether stock price moved or not. So you must learn those skills. What are some of those skills? Number one, if you don't know how to sell, it will be difficult for you to become a CEO. 
because you are not just selling, you are pushing people to sell. Number two, if you don't know how to build connections, you can't become a CEO. A CEO must build connections. A CEO must have executive presence. Your English can be wayward, and you want to become a CEO. <laughs> Praise God. So there are some things you need to learn. Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. So that's the first one. Very important. So the next thing is high income skills. Now, when it comes to high income skills, someone says, okay, pastor, can I learn high income skills as a salary earner? Yes. But one big difference is this. As a salary earner, you are paid for your time. As an high income skill person, you are based, based on outcomes and outputs. I remember the story. Okay, no, let me not use that story. But so, so high income skills. What are some high income skills? Sales. One of the most, one of the wealthiest people in nine to fives are salespeople. You know why? There's the normal salary, then there's commission. And what they live on is on commission, not on salary. So you must begin to think about how do I move from just earning like this to now start developing high income skills. When you are when you are paid based on your, your skill, you know what happens to you? If you lose your job, you're not sad. You know why? That job was just one of the ways that you made money. I know this one, this is a, I know this story. There's a guy, he's a software engineer, and recently he lost his job. So I was talking to him because I know him very well. I said, oh, so, and I know him because I know him, the job was just 10% of his, of his monthly income. So I said, oh, how are you feeling? He said, Pastor, I'm okay. In my mind, I said, why won't you be okay? All you lost was 10% of your income. Why? Because he has so much skill in software engineering that he's able to do a lot of other things. So if the kind of job you do, you're still being paid for your time, that can be a good place to start, but don't stop there. Because nobody can become a billionaire being paid for their time. You don't have enough time to earn billions. You don't have what? Enough time to what? Earn billions. So don't, don't wait on that alone. The second one, the other one I'm going to talk about quickly when it comes to, to, to money vehicle is normal business. You can start a business. You can start a business. Business is a, repeated, is a repetitive way to create value. That's how I define business. How can I have, I have, I have, I have systematized the process of creating value. That's what you call a business. So, excuse me, you did one deal, one off, once in seven years. That's not a business. That's one chance. A business is something that is repeated. So you can get deal, but you can have business. There are two different things. Don't confuse deal for business. Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. So there are several types of businesses you can start. One that is gaining traction a lot now is content business. I know someone in, in Bagada Church. She sent me a message. She said, Pastor, when I started, my, I started my YouTube page, I had zero subscribers, and I was praying, believing God, and I did not do any adverts, nothing. I don't know what she did. And after that, come and tell me what she did. She said, in one year, she moved from zero subscribers to 60,000 subscribers. Can I tell you something? The video she creates, she has about 500,000 views on each of her videos. Guess what? She does not show her face. She doesn't show, her, she doesn't show any... All she just do, does is to take a video of her life. Oh, this is what I did today, all of that. That's all she does. Last I checked, with that amount that she's making, with, with that number of views per video, she'll make it like four million naira. But you, you will go to work, nine to five. Sweat, 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 sweat. No matter how you try it, 150K, you need, to take, you need to think differently. That's just one example. That's just one example. Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. So you can do business. There are different types of businesses you can do. But make sure that there is a repetitive way to create value. Remember my definition of value. Because if there's no repetitive way to create value, it's just... Hustle. 
Because some of you, you are in, a, you are in hustle, you are not in business. Glory to Jesus. I said glory to Jesus. The other way to make money is investments. And this one, I'm very passionate about this one. There are different types of investments. There's low-risk investment, there's medium-risk investment, and there's high-risk investment. What's low-risk? Low-risk, low-return. An example, fixed deposit in a deposit money bank licensed by the Central Bank of Nigeria. I hope you heard what I said. Because some of you have gone to do fixed deposit with Awalawa. They now took your money. You now say fixed deposit does not work. I don't know who sent you there. So fixed deposit in a deposit money bank licensed by the Central Bank of Nigeria. So that there will not be a problem. So some say, Pastor, but the rates are small. What is he doing in your bank account? So let's just do something. And the other one is what? Medium risk. What's medium risk? Medium risk, medium return. So what's medium risk? For example, your brother said he wants to start a business. You give him money. He may succeed. He may not succeed. And because it's your brother, if the money goes, what will you do? You report him to your father. There's nothing you can do. So the money might come, the money might go. You can borrow somebody's money. You have agreement. Ah, we all did those things. But at the end of the day, the guys come and say, the money is gone. What will you do? Carry him to jail. Even to carry the person to jail, you spend money. You don't have to ask yourself, is there wisdom in, the, in pursuing this thing? Glory to God. So, medium risk, medium return. So, you can start a business yourself. You can invest in a business. You can invest in a business. And then there were some other businesses that came up. You know, they'll collect your money. They'll give you double in six months. I mean, we did all those things. It was medium risk. Why? Some of us, we chopped inside. And some of it, it chopped us. Praise God. So it's medium risk, medium return. There's one that my brother was still asking me. Why are these people, won't they return our money? I said, okay, can you move on? Because they even tried, they had an app, so you could see your money on the app. But the, right now, the app doesn't go again. They're gone. So you must be ready. Then the third one is high risk investments. What's high risk? High risk, high return. <laughs> this kind of investment, just be ready. You see him, and this is one of the reasons why people enter financial ruin. This, in fact, I hope I could get there. If I can't, I'll do that in the next service. One of the reasons why people have financial problems is because they make financial mistakes. What is a financial mistake most people make? You invest money into a business you don't understand, and that money is not money that you can walk away from. Any money you want to invest in a high risk, medium risk, make sure you can walk away from it. So that the money doesn't take your life. So that the money doesn't take your life. So, high risk, high return. So, say, Pastor, you know, these things are fake. Let me tell you something. This one, I know. I'll give you a good example. I know them. When all these WW, six months, three months, the guy carried 40 million. Not in this devaluation, no. 40 million. Took it there. I said, guy, you get the vow. For six months, every month he will call me, Pastor, my, heart, my blood pressure. Pastor, I said, don't worry. The Lord will help you. After six months, they gave him his 40 million, gave him another 40 million. He carried the 80 million. He went to go and buy a house. He's still living in the house today. <laughs> so this one is not, uh, it's real. But I know one, double, <laughs> double, the third time. And you know the way this thing is? When you invest now, maybe you invest one million, you get one million back, you say, ah, this thing, they work. <laughs> Instead of it, use wisdom. Take out your principal. Invest only the profit, so that if it goes, nothing do you. But instead of that, you say, no, 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 no. Yeah, the more the merrier, the more the merrier. Continue. Is it Merry Christmas? So you, you, you get two, the two million put. Two million turn to four million. Say, what, Sherry? This one is just going to make everything. In that kind of four million, oh boy, he could not find them again. Money all gone. Glory to God. So what was an example of a high-risk, high-return investment? 
there's something called venture capital. <laughs> this, this money we are talking is not... It's not <laughs> How many of you know a company called Paystack? Good. Paystack started in 2015. There were some people that invested early in Paystack, 2015. So let's say, for example, I mean, I know a guy, I'm positive you, we know the guy. This guy was one of the early investors. Let's say this guy took $10,000 in 2015 and invested in Paystack. In 2020, when they bought Paystack over, the people that invested at the beginning, they made 1,400% return. So you know what that means? If that guy invested $10,000 $10, in 2020, he cashed out with $14 million. It's not magic. It's called venture capital. But last year, about six or seven startups, they raised a combined total of $70 million. Like, when I say last year, I mean in the period of one year. And last year, all of them came and said, we are shutting down. Excuse me, sir. Where is our money? We have shut down. The money is gone. What happened to the investors? They've gone. So it's a very risky business. But can I tell you something? Ask most people that are successful and wealthy. Ask them. Most of them, if not all of them, they have a portfolio of high-risk investments. That I've put money here. If it goes, my life will not change. But if it enters, my life will change. So what's the principle? Invest what you can walk away from. So what I even tell people, if you invest $10,000 now, when you're looking at your portfolio of all the money you have, forget about that money. Don't even add it. So me, I have some like that. Sponsor money, so I, I, just, I just put them separately. So every time we pray on next level every day, Fada, kabakush, kakush, shaka, shaka, shaka. So you that you're not praying next level, you don't have problem. I'm praying, Lord, let this thing move. Let it move. Because I don't even need 1,400%. All I need is 100 times. I'm okay. The next time you see me, I'll be walking on air. Ah, if that, <laughs> if that money come, oh my God. Glory to God. High risk, high returns. So, the question is this. And let me tell you something. Also, oh, Pastor, all this is great. So, let me go and do it now. Hey, invest in only what you understand. All of you that invest in businesses you don't understand, you are on your own. Because once they do you like this, the more you look, the less you see you. <laughs> you just close your eyes like this, all the money is gone. So, invest in what you what? Understand. Glory to God. I've been blessed today. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus together. <laughs> so we'll continue in the other services. My time is up. My time is up. So please, if it was to live here today, make sure that you invest in what you what? Understand. Don't invest money you cannot what? Walk away from. And let me tell you something. I'm just going around here. I'll continue the next service about this, but I'm, I'm, you know, I've put my notes aside. So I say, Pastor, I'll become wealthy by how much I make. No. You don't become wealthy by how much you make. You become wealthy by how much you are able to put away from what you make. This is why a lot of people that are athletes, um, all these entertainers, after they have stopped raining, you don't hear them again. How many of you remember Ronaldinho? Do you remember Ronaldinho, footballer? I hope you know. It's documented. There was a time Ronaldinho went to jail. His friends had to come and bail him. He didn't have money to bail himself. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine? I'll share a start in the third service about Kobe Bryant. <laughs> oh, God. So, the, the measure of your success is not by how much you make. It's about how much you can put away and invest and make from those in Investments. Praise God. Hallelujah. Come on, let's celebrate Jesus together one more time. Praise God. Hallelujah.